King Arthur promised us safety on these shores. Instead, we found stormy seas, rocks like shark teeth, and treacherous mists. Those few who managed to land will be set by hunger, cold, and nightmares born of weirdness. My people settled around a gnarled old statue. Though we did not understand its origin or purpose, the enemy seemed to avoid it. That was good enough. For a time. In the end, the winds of weirdness only grew stronger, and the statue failed to protect the settlement. There was fear, despair, and then... nothingness. As reality melted around us. You awake to nothingness. All you can sense is darkness. A dense mass of emptiness so total that even your thoughts disintegrate. Then you hear whistling. An eternity seems to pass before something materializes in the darkness with you. Something angry. Damn it, you weren't supposed to land here. Damn it all to hell. The creature pauses for a moment, clearly weighing up some options. He taps a finger against one of his horns. Now, listen, there's a lot to do and no time to waste. What can we try? Perfect. You can speak and yes, these are really great questions. No easy answers though. Sorry to disappoint. Now, listen closely. Are you ready? Brace yourself, because what I'm going to tell you is rather important. You're gone. Your village is gone. Everything you've ever known is gone. Yes, everything and everyone, including your very own self, as I mentioned already, however. The creature taps two hooves together, marking a dramatic pause. There is a small chance, an infinitesimally tiny chance, really, to bring it all back. You were saved from death in order to keep your reality from falling apart. But, well, it's not going to be easy. First, we must ensure that you're in good enough condition to actually do anything. Which brings us to the problematic part. Your body. You squint down at your feet and hands in the darkness. They seem perfectly fine. Oh no. Oh. Goodness me, no. That's just an illusion. I had to get you here somehow, didn't I? Otherwise, you'd start talking about the afterlife and whatnot. And this, my friend, is not an afterlife. This is a total mess. But let's see what we can do. Here, this little trick should get us started at least. Well, it seems your soul isn't strong enough to be picky about its vessel, yet. Don't worry, you'll grow. Now, we need to see whether my little trick actually worked. The goat weaves his fingers in an intricate series of gestures. With a final flourish, he conjures a terrifying creature into the emptiness. Aha, here we go. This is a powerful Avalonian warlock. 
But don't worry, he's not really here. Not in the truest sense. Your goal here is simple. Fight. Show me that you've got what it takes.
should have seen that coming. It was optimistic of me to expect you to beat it on your first try, but don't worry. Like I said, you'll grow. I'm going to send you to a very special place now. It's a mirror of your reality, located in an endless loop between life and death. You won't die there, but nothing's really alive there either. You'll wake up in a place resembling your own village. You'll find a man there whose task it is to help you on your journey. Your main objective for now will be to push onwards, survive, kill the four guardians, then we'll talk. Listen, it's been four years since humans landed on these shores. Four years of strife, fear and hunger. At least that's what you tell yourselves. And four years of war you are destined to lose because even the mightiest human wizards are no match for the Avalonians. Seeing your expression, it makes an impatient grimace, stepping from one foot to the other. The war you brought here? Well, it wasn't exactly going in your favor. But then that wizard, Merlin? Well, he had an idea. Your king, Arthur, he had another brilliant idea. Both stubborn mules, both playing with powers they didn't understand and were never meant to understand. And so we're here, in this corrupted reality, strung together with the last strand of somebody's goodwill. Where your hometown once was, a lone man sits among the remains. He doesn't notice you. Only when you walk right up to him, he turns his blank stare toward you. It's not my farmhold, is it? I'm from up north, the land of fog. I... I don't know what happened. At least that's one thing you have in common. A creature that looked like a goat told me I'd wake up in a strange place and that I'd find someone in need of my help there. The man looks at you for a moment. I've already made some preparations and settled in one of the tents here. I can't offer you much at the moment, though. This place is different. And you? I've seen an enormous creature out there, a column of stone. The evil energy it emits is beyond anything I've ever felt. I'd say getting rid of that beast would be a good start. Right now, this building is an abandoned ruin. However, during your travels, you might find someone who'd be willing to settle in here and help you with your quest. Right now, this building is an abandoned ruin. However, during your travels, you might find someone who'd be willing to settle in here and help you with your quest. I don't remember, and I don't know what I'm doing here or how I got here. All I know is I'm supposed to be helping you with your quest. All I know for now is that you need to find the rest of the people who are supposed to join us and help them out in their troubles. I don't know. Maybe it will come back? Maybe there's something that could trigger my memories.
caught you before you went out, all and you're lonesome. Our mutual friend already told you to slay the stone golem. Perfect. The golem is just a start, though. Even if you do manage to kill it, the further you go, the more dangerous the road will become. And since we're talking roads, you're walking within the weirdness now, and it's dangerous. Take these candles, light them up, and try not to let this damned fog close around you. Got it? Oh, and before you face the golem, look around the area. There's a blacksmith nearby who might be willing to join your village. Finding people like him will be crucial for your survival. Each one will be helpful in a different way. And with that, I'm out. Good luck. It's a mystery why these stones light up and banish the weirdness when people walk by. Many believe Merlin himself invented the runes carved into them. There's also a darker rumor that they were left by the Ford dwellers to lure humans into their domain like moths to the flame.
the flickering light of the weird candle combines with the milestone's faint radiance, the surrounding darkness is pushed even further back. Wandering around, you notice that the plants on the ground around you are more like muscle tissue than typical vegetation. Then you notice an old man smiling at you in a disturbingly friendly manner. He's sitting near an enormous pool of blood and stacks of fancy bouquets made of body parts. Hands, hearts, testicles, arms, all held together by an unknown power form the shape of a sunflower. Your horrified eyes pass over baubles made of kidneys and macabre flowers tied neatly with intestine ribbons. Come, don't be afraid. I suppose some might consider my shop rather extravagant, but trust me, you won't find anything quite like my bouquets in these woods. So, what do you have for me today? He notices a question forming on your lips. Oh, a pity. I thought you came here with my delivery. Well, that's an inconvenience. Anyway, you can still take a look at my wares.
splendid choice. I guarantee you won't regret it. These were preserved with care and the expertise of my years of experience, so they should last for quite a while. The man's joy quickly turns to sadness. With teary eyes, he continues. Yes, this bouquet would have been a perfect gift for a special lady. One that's dear to your heart. If only... He sobs for a while. Then, with a shaky voice, he explains. Bouquets have a purpose. They were invented for a reason. But that purpose has disappeared from this world. Nobody needs them anymore. Everyone says there are more important matters at hand. We just don't live in the right times for vanity and joy. And that's what bouquets are all about. Right? He tries to collect himself. But I won't give up. I need to believe that all is not lost. And I do have a favor to ask of you. There is a lady out there, the fairest maiden of them all. I've only seen her once, true, but I know that she's the one for me. There's no doubt in my mind. Her presence by my side is all I dream about. Her beauty is all I can see. Please, I beg you, take the bouquet. When you meet her, the love of my life, she's bound to notice that it was made especially for her. Let her know that there's someone in this world who won't ever stop dreaming about her.
a song breaks through the slithering of the weirdness. I have no hope, no home, no gold. Mine is but misty morning cold. Not long afterwards, you come upon a man wearing a blacksmith's apron. Oi, traveller. Want to buy a good anvil? Tis all I have, I'm afraid. Me home, you see, went poof. One minute there, next minute gone. I found myself here, with this lump of iron for company. I swear to gods it started talking to me not long ago. Oh, no. I left that life behind quite a while ago. All I'm interested in these days are rune stones. Yes, containers for the magic of giants. Even though you'll usually find them broken, they're extremely powerful. You can use them to enhance your weapons or armor. They will influence your abilities in different ways. Also, when you find three of the same kind and rarity, you'll be able to fuse them together. This will make them even more powerful. Here, let me give you some. You can try it later. I'd say that since you know what you're looking for, you should be able to find more of them out there. By the way, You want me in your village? Well, you must first prove you can take care of yourself. Kill ten bears and... Ha! Huh, just fooling for pity's sake. What would I need ten bears for? Show me the way.
you hear someone screaming nearby. Godless healing! Godless healing! Intrigued, you approach the source of the sound. It turns out to be a joyful man advertising his merchandise to the nearest trees. Who said you need an all mother or a stag father to have a blessing of health? Let's not dwell on them anymore. It's all about potions and elixirs and other trinkets infused with proper. His monologue goes on. You can see tiny horns growing from his skull. His mind clearly isn't quite right either. Maybe disrespecting the gods wasn't such a great idea after all. 